Hey guys, welcome to... Son of a bitch, Mosquito. I'll get you. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning good. And welcome back to Dragon Ball Month, guys. We did it last year and we're doing it again. Now, I couldn't find this request because it was last year and there's been quite a few comments since then, but today we're taking on Piccolo's Special Beam Cannon. Now, I want to apologize for this episode being late, but the effect, it's not an easy one to figure out. In fact, I spent four days using expressions and particles and lights, and it looked cool on its own, but once I comped it into live action, it looked, in my professional opinion, like crap. And see for yourself. Yeah. So there's a bit of a lesson here, guys. What works in the cartoon doesn't always translate to live action. So what I've done is take the essence of what the special beam cannon is and put my own spin on it so that it works in a real life setting. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to click the link below and grab the download pack that contains our lightning elements. Shooting your footage for this effect is pretty easy, guys. Just shoot a close-up of your actor charging up the beam, like so, and then cut to a medium or far shot as you unleash it. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects with our two shots set up in comps and ready to go. We'll start with our charging close up right here. If you head over to the project menu, you can see I have a folder I've imported named SBC Elements. You can download this in the description. If we open that up, let's open up the comp marked Charging. This looks a little familiar. And it should. What I've done is reuse the lightning from the flash running effect, changing a few settings of course. So let's explain those now. The first change you'll see is that the lightning type is set to anywhere, which basically constrains the lightning to a ball shape, much like a mask would. I've also colored it purple by clicking on the top adjustment layer and playing with the color balance settings until I found a color that works for me. If you want a different color other than purple, just start experimenting until you find the color you're looking for. So basically, in this comp, all we're doing is animating the origin and direction to give the impression that our special beam cannon is expanding as it charges. So head up to frame 10 and expand both the origin and direction until you're happy with the size of the ball. We'll then hit the stopwatch on both of those. From there, let's head to the start of the comp and then drag them back in so they're basically sitting on top of each other. Like so. If we check out a preview now, you can see the lightning now grows outward. Next, let's head over to our charging close-up and drop our lightning in. We'll then change the transfer mode to screen and position it in place. From there, you want to glue that lightning to either your actor's forehead or finger, depending on your choice. I'm choosing forehead as my hand moves around a little too much. So let's head up, grab a null object, and then head back down, highlighting our footage layer, and then jump over to tracker and hit track motion. Grab a spot on the head that's easy to track, like so, and then hit the play button to track forward. If you need to adjust the track at any point, make sure you do. Once you're happy, let's set the target to our null, hit apply, and then hit OK. Now that we have our tracking data, let's pair in our charging comp to the null. Next, we want to simulate the light fall off from our charging beam. So let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, and then stay up there and head to effect, color correction, exposure, head up to the same section, and add a hue and saturation. Now before we change any of the settings on either of these two, grab the pen tool and let's draw a rough mask around the forehead, nose, and hand. Hit F and let's feather that mask out a crap load. Okay, time to change those settings. Firstly in the exposure, let's crank it up to at least two to get a good blow out of the light. From there, move down to hue and saturation and let's crank that dial until we find a good match for our lightning charge. I'm also going to turn down the saturation so it doesn't look too over the top. Now since the beam charge happens over time, we don't want this adjustment layer to be visible from frame one. So let's hit T to bring up opacity Hit the stopwatch and crank it down to zero. We'll then move forward, say 10 frames and crank it up to 100. Our last step on this shot is to add one more adjustment layer. We'll then head to effect, generate and add a light raise. Let's move it into place and then change some of the settings because as you can see, it's blowing out our image a little too much. So let's tweak it. 
We'll change the intensity to 13, the radius to 278, the warp softness to 21. We've charged up our beam. Now, let's unleash it. Now, let's add our charge to the next shot using roughly the same procedure. Let's drag and drop our charging layer in, changing the transfer mode to screen. Before we start our position animation here, let's trim those first 10 frames off this clip and we no longer need them. This time, we'll scale and position it into place. Let's hit the stopwatch on position and instead of tracking, let's animate the position frame by frame as a track isn't gonna be that easy with the amount of movement we have here. When you're done, let's grab our exposure slash hue and saturation adjustment layer from the other comp, copy it and paste it into this one. We'll then collapse the mask settings and delete that mask. While we're there, let's also delete that opacity animation. We no longer need it. From there, let's grab the pen tool and draw a new mask around our hand and then feather it out around 100 pixels. Let's then parent the adjustment layer to our charging layer. We've now avoided more animation. Yay! So here's where things get really hard. I'm just kidding, this is super easy. In our download pack folder, guys, you'll see a comp called Beam. Let's open that up. Now guys, I want to explain a little bit how I modified this lightning to more resemble a beam. If you notice here, we have a drop down menu called Expert Settings. And since we're all professionals here, let's collapse that down and I'll show you two settings in particular. One is called Complexity and one is called Minimum Fork Distance. If I turn off all of the adjustment layers, you'll be able to see this way better. Our complexity is set to three. If I crank that up, you can see it begins to resemble stereotypical lightning, all jagged and whatnot. Crank it back down and it gets all curvy and smooth. Now, our fork distance is set to eight at the moment. This is the lowest it can go and see how it looks like strands of hair? If I crank that up, you can see that it elongates those strands, separating them further apart. So by cranking both of these settings down, we take our lightning from all snap and crackle to a smooth beam. Pretty cool, eh? Anyway, let's animate this thing. We'll jump over to our beam comp, copy the footage, and then paste it in and drag it to the bottom of our comp. Let's then scrub to just after the point where our actor unleashes the beam. Just a couple of frames will do. Line up where you want the beam to be by moving the origin and direction. That looks pretty good. Let's then hit the stopwatch on origin and direction, head to the end of the comp and then drag that direction way out. And I mean way out. We want to give the impression that it's going a long way. We'll then scrub to the point in the footage where we unleash the beam. We'll then drag the direction on top of the origin so that our beam disappears. Let's check out a preview now. Not bad. But we've forgotten one thing. It can't be a special beam cannon without some sort of corkscrewish pulse, right? Right. So here's how we do that. Firstly, delete our footage straight from the comp. We don't need it anymore. Let's then copy our solid containing our lightning effect, unclick the stopwatch on origin and direction, and let's change some settings. We'll change the turbulence to 5.43, the decay to zero, head down to expert settings, and we'll then change the complexity to one, the fork distance to 78, the fractal type to semi-linear, and the fork variation to 100%. So as you can see, when I stretch out the directional point now, the lightning flares out like a pulse, all fat and whatnot. So let's animate it. Head to the point where our beam first unleashes and hit the stopwatch on origin and direction. We'll then animate our pulse to grow larger by stretching the distance between this origin and direction and then have it leave the frame over say eight frames. If I scrub through, you can see what I mean. Now, here's the secret. We'll then trim this layer on both sides so it only lasts for that eight frames. Now since I can't really create a full circle for our pulse, we're just gonna copy the layer we just created, head up to layer, flip vertical, rotate it into position, and we now have a full circle pulse. You may have to adjust the origin location on a few frames so they marry up, but it's a hell of a lot easier than starting from scratch, eh? Okay, so that's one pulse, but we need a lot more. So let's highlight both frames, copy them and paste them. We'll then drag them down the timeline so they just overlap our previous pulse. You may have to adjust their position slightly so that they sit on the beam. Rinse and repeat this process a whole bunch of times, turn on our adjustment layers, and the end result should look like this. Pretty sweet, huh? Time to head back to our original comp and then drop this bad boy in. 
changing the transfer mode to screen of course. Let's then parent the layer to our charge layer so that it moves naturally with our hand. Now we've run into a little problem here. You can see that after we've parented our beam layer, you can see the edge of the comp peeking through up in the top corner because our animation's moving around a little bit too much. To solve that issue, just hit S and just scale it up a little bit. Let's check out a preview. Looking good. Okay, our beam is shooting out all sweet-like. Time to add a little flare. So as far as flare goes, guys, I've only added a few things. A turbulent displace to signify the heat distortion coming from the beam, a small particle blast, and a fire element. Now you don't need the particles or the fire, but I just think it adds a little bit more depth to the effect. Both of these elements are from Filmrite's Fire Assets Pack, which is pretty good for 30 bucks. I'd recommend picking it up since it has some good stuff in it, but if you have similar fire assets, you can use them too. So let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, jump back to effect, distort and add a turbulent displace. Tweaking time guys. Let's change the amount to 17, the size to 12, hit the stopwatch on evolution, head to the end of the comp and set it to say 4. We'll then trim the layer so it starts just after the blast. We'll then head up, grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around the area we want to affect, since we don't want it displacing the whole comp. Subtlety is the key here people. We'll then hit F and feather it out a few pixels so that it blends better in the shot. Now our last step with the fire and particles is pretty easy guys. Drop the fire in, from there, move it on the timeline so that it marries up with the timing of your blast. Scale, position and rotate it into place and if you need to, make it 3D and continue to tweak it if it doesn't look right. Next, let's change the transfer mode to either screen or add, depending on how bright you want the fire to be. We'll then head up to effect, color correction and add a tint. Then jump over to the presets menu, type vibrance and add video copilot's color vibrance plugin and use the eyedropper to change the color to our purple. If you don't have this particular preset, click the link in the description to download it. Rinse and repeat this same process with the particles if you feel like any of these clips are running just a little bit too slow for your beam, just right click, head up to time and add time stretch. I'm just going to hit this around 50% and we're all done. Add up all those steps and you'll get something like this. Hey guys, welcome to... So that's the special beam cannon guys, I know it's not 100% authentic, but you saw what it looks like when it is, you know. If you know how we could improve it, by all means, sound off in the comments. And thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and share it. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, join the Facebook page, and I'll see you soon for more Dragon Ball Month. And as always, keep learning!